Welcome to the Random Bites Podcast, available on Spreaker.com, iTunes, Google Play, and just added to iHeartRadio. A new podcast every day featuring interviews and a unique take on the world we live in. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Random Bites. Here is your host, Alan Wayne. Uh, good evening, folks. This is Alan Wayne here, uh, welcoming you to episode 30 of Random Bites. This evening, I cannot hide it. I cannot even, I cannot even put a happy face on, really, uh, because today another one of my favorite acts from childhood committed suicide. Uh, well, not from childhood, but from youth. Um, a, a band that had a connection to me that I don't think anyone was truly aware of, um, even myself. (laughs) Uh, but every time I'd hear Lincoln park, it would take me somewhere. Uh, it would take me to these early twenties that I lived and, and the times I had with my friends and, and just the remarkable music that came out of Lincoln park at the time. And, 
uh, I continued to be a fan of theirs for many, many years up until the most recent album. Uh, and it's just really heartbreaking to hear the news about Chester Bennington. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, Chester Bennington, the lead singer of Lincoln Park, uh, died today at age 41 of an apparent suicide. Um, and it just, it, it just really, it just really, really, it, it's like enough already, you know? I mean, like last month we lose Chris Cornell, a, a guy who seemed to be doing okay. And just one day just offed himself. And here we have Chester Bennington who was on tour, just released an album and he fucking hung himself, man. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I cannot fathom any of this. Maybe it's because I don't have the same problems. It's because I'm not in their shoes, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know what makes these guys do this, especially, you know, with Chester having six kids, um, the adoration of so many, the, the, the just wonder and awe of millions of people. Lincoln Park was still a good draw. Lincoln Park was doing very well as far as, as far as a group, as well as a music group can do nowadays. And, uh, they just, it just seemed, it just came out of left field for me. So I did a little bit of research and what I'm going to be talking about tonight is of course, give you a little backstory on Chester Bennington, a little obit, if you would, uh, tell you about my personal experiences with Chester Bennington. Uh, I have about one or two, but, <laughs> but I will share those with you. Uh, nothing intimate or anything like that. Me and him didn't sit together and have a cup of coffee, but we did know some of the same people. And, um, we did, uh, I, I did get a little bit of the inside skinny on Chester, uh, from a couple of these people. And, and I'll be sharing that tonight and I will be playing some Lincoln park music. Now I know that kind of goes against the whole iHeartRadio slash thing, but at this point, I mean, this is tribute. This, this has got to be fair use because this is tribute. And there's a part of me that doesn't even really care <laughs> to be honest with you. It would just feel weird to play anything other than Lincoln park or STP or anything like that on a night like tonight when we lose, when we lose, uh, Mr. Bennington. So for those of you who, uh, for those of you who don't know, Chester, Chester Charles Bennington was born March 20th, 1976. He became known as a vocalist with Lincoln Park's debut album, Hybrid Theory in 2000, which was a massive commercial success. I remember getting a copy of it and I remember having it scratch. It got scratched. This was back in the days of CDs, of course it got scratched. And then I went out and bought another copy. I think I bought three or four copies of hybrid theory. Um, I'm still looking for it on vinyl. I know it's out there, but it's one of my favorite albums from top to bottom. Uh, no doubts, tragic kingdom, uh, Lincoln parks, hybrid theory, stone temple pilots, tiny music. Those are three of my tops from that, from that general area, from the nineties to the knots. Uh, those are generally three of my favorite albums. And, uh, I really like thousand sons from Lincoln park later on. I, I just, everything Lincoln park put out, I bought up until most recent, most recent music. Um, I bought their single heavy, uh, featuring Kalara, which you'll be hearing a little bit later tonight. So, uh, Lincoln park, was very successful. The album Hybrid Theory was certified diamond by the RIAA in 2005. Made it the best-selling debut album of any of the decade actually, as well as one of the few albums to ever hit that many sales. Linkin Park produced multiple albums, Meteora, Meteora 2003, Minutes to Midnight 2007, A Thousand Suns 2010, Living Things 2012, and The Hunting Party in 2000 and 14, <clears throat> 2014. Chester Bennington also lived a childhood dream by becoming the lead singer of Stone Temple Pilots and releasing an album called High Rise in 2013. 
to their own record label, Playpen. I mean, imagine that. He was a big fan, big fan of Stone Temple Pilots. And they came to him and asked him to be lead singer. I mean, just imagine. And that's where my kind of, I guess, secondhand knowledge of Chester Bennington comes from. When I went to school for broadcasting, my mentor is a man by the name of Jim Daniels. He taught me quite a few different things. Uh, he was always kind and patient and very brutally honest. When I first started for the school, he was the PD for a rock station out in Riverside. And I saw him uh, at his PD position before he quit. It was like his last day when I went there. It was funny. And for those of you who don't know what a PD is, it's a program director. He was the guy who arranged everything. And he said one of his favorite interviews and the interview that he was so stoked about was Chester Bennington with Stone Temple Pilots. And they were doing a, a live promotion for, for high rise. And Chester was, he remembers that Chester was the most professional vocalist he'd ever seen because he, he'd done numerous interviews with numerous different bands and Chester at like nine o'clock in the morning was doing vocal exercises for about 20 minutes. He was doing this whole wow, wow, wow thing with his mouth. He was, he was completely prepared, completely sober and completely ready to go. And Jim could tell right there, there was a level of dedication to Chester that was pretty much unparalleled with any artist that he had ever known. Chester didn't see this as just a blow off gig in some station out in Riverside. He, he gave it his all. And that tells you about the character of somebody when, when they're willing to do the same vocal exercises for a one or two song little promo on the radio that they do for uh, selling uh, millions and millions of tickets or, or selling out an arena. You know, that that's, that's dedication. And that was about 2014, I believe. About the same. Yeah, he, he had just interviewed Chester back then. Late 2013, early 2014. So a little bit about Chester Bennington. He was born in Phoenix, Arizona. His mother was a nurse. His father was a police detective who worked with child sex abuse cases and took double shifts. Bennington took interest in music at a very young age, citing bands Depeche Mode and Stone Temple Pilots, who <laughs> trip out, I still can't believe it, later sang for them as his early inspirations. He dreamed of being a member of Stone Temple Pilots. After his parents divorced, his father gained custody. Bennington went down the road of abusing marijuana, alcohol, opiates, cocaine, and meth, and LSD. He overcame his drug addiction and would denounce it in later interviews, so it was something he did in his youth. Uh, Bennington also revealed that he suffered sexual abuse from an older male friend when he was seven years old. He was afraid to ask for help. He did not want people to think he was gay or lying, and the abuse continued until the age of 13. Now, that right there, I mean, abuse can really fuck with you. Uh, no shit, right? Abuse can really fuck with you as an adult, no matter when it happens. I have firsthand knowledge of it, but um, not of me, but from someone very close to me. And they are still in therapy to this day. Uh, and they've been in therapy for a long time. And it just pops up every so often. You know, this, this kind of feeling of, of shame and, and, and pain. It just pops up. It never goes away. You just kind of carry it with you, you know. And, and I can't imagine how that is. So at the age of 17, Bennington moved in with his mother and was banned from leaving the house when his mother discovered his drug activity. He worked at Burger King before starting a career as a professional musician. God, I remember those days. I used to work at Pizza Hut thinking I was going to be a professional musician.